It's been quite busy for the past couple of weeks, but I'm struggling to think what can be shown. So a lot of stuff is not really that obvious, I guess. Um, so in the living room, pretty much as before, except I've done a full skim coat over the plasterboard that was on this wall here. Some people think it's not needed. Some people say it gives a better finish. I think if we're going to paint directly onto the, the, the walls and leave them smooth, I think a skim coat makes sense so that we don't see the jointing or the screw holes where they've been filled, etc. If we're going to go for a kind of a, what they call here, roll puts, where you put on a thin coat of uh, yeah, structured plaster with a roller or a brush, uh, then it doesn't matter so much, but uh, I just thought I'd give it a try, see how it goes, and yeah, it's quite easy actually. And it looks nice, looks almost finished. And on the other side of this wall, uh, just yesterday I uh, did the jointing here, and on Friday night completed the, the plasterboard there, so there's OSB sheets, and then a 12mm plasterboard on top, so that might get the skim treatment and uh, that means in the hall uh, I just have to complete this part uh, there were some cables in the way they were removed yesterday so uh, ready to do that and that will mean that the hallway uh, will look less like a building site because when people come up the stairs here and the first thing they're faced with this is, uh, is this kind of site they go, oh Jesus, they're never going to finish um, so that'll make a big difference. <clears throat> in the kitchen, nothing much changed since last time. I think maybe just even filling, not sure what I did. Uh, except yesterday I did the uh, jointing or repointing on the uh, on the chimney here, which is really easy. We got this old style mortar, uh, which is pretty expensive and. Uh, basically mix that up and uh, in the cellar I used a kind of a pointing trowels uh, which is kind of laborious kind of tucking the uh, mortar in between the, the stones or bricks this time I used a grout bag which is basically like a giant icing bag filled with mortar so you kind of squeeze it in between the bricks and then use the uh, the, the pointing trowel to um, to straighten it off and push it in and uh, with the bricks it soaks up even though I wet them down really well it soaks up the moisture really quick so the the mortar hardens fairly rapidly so I had to work fast so looks quite nice though the uh, the door for the uh, the chimney uh, for access for cleaning it's lying uh, on the ground here in the middle of the frame it's painted white on the other side uh, so we're going to strip all that off and then uh, do some metal primer on it and uh, then a, a matte black so it looks a bit like cast iron I've looked and looked and I can't find a cast iron uh, door of the same size and I don't want uh, stainless steel uh, white just looks gack uh, I kind of want a, a black finish so it kind of stands out a bit and makes a, a bit of a feature of it uh, ceilings I've also made decisions about how to deal with this transition between old and new I'm not going to do anything fancy I'm just going to do a butt joint and uh, fill it so it's at a right angle and whatever um, and that'll be it I just don't have time or the energy to start doing complicated fancy solutions and uh, another big change I guess uh, is the stairs so uh, from photos and maybe other videos um, People might remember that the back of these stairs, the original stairs, there was uh, cladding, wooden cladding, so you couldn't see the back of the steps. I was a bit afraid when uh, my wife was taking it off because I wasn't sure what to expect behind it, but it's actually okay. And the uh, the side parts were painted grey, and uh, my wife then sanded all that off yesterday. Uh, so it's a bit rough at the moment, just to get the paint off, and that'll go and then go through a fine sanding process and then uh, yeah it'll be oiled um, or maybe I don't know maybe some sort of varnish so it's a bit more hard wearing on the steps themselves uh, but we've got a bit of time to do that but at least that's more of the dusty work done and the uh, next thing to do really is once the plasterboard work is finished we need to start on the clay plaster work uh, there's not that much left on this level uh, so this is the original straw and clay uh, kind of under plaster and we just yeah plaster directly on top of that some little prep work to do and then that's done 
and similarly in the bedroom well I'm still not sure if it's going to be a bedroom but uh, yeah the same job has to be done here otherwise yeah since the last video uh, all the skim coats have been done uh, it's quite okay I have to finish this one and have to do something special with this wall which has cracks and all sorts of things in it because the beam it was sitting on had sagged in the past and uh, that's now supported down the cellar so yeah just some uh, special plaster and webbing <coughs> or mesh to embed in it and uh, yeah that'll be good to go and then this room will be nearly finished apart from the decorating and otherwise Oh yeah, plasterboard's also finished in the uh, the bathroom. So it's all ready for skimming. And we just take a quick look upstairs. We haven't been doing very much up there in the past few weeks, concentrating on the first floor. But uh, at least the oiling has uh, started on the beams, which really makes a big difference. A much warmer toned. And the two uh, dark horizontal ones are oak with kind of a smoky effect and I'm not sure what the others are. Um, could be fir or something, so but it's a slightly paler wood, not as heavy. But it gives them a quite nice contrast now that they're oiled, something we couldn't see before. And uh, yeah, once I get the work downstairs finished, I'll move up here and start doing the skim coating on the, the filling on these walls, the jointing and stuff. Yeah, still possible to move in before Christmas.